Hey guys. So I asked on Twitter this past week if there was any vlog topics that someone wanted me to talk about on my vlog here. And Mel B posted back and she said, Hey, can you talk about social anxiety and dealing with that when you're going to Nerdfighter events? Now, if you're not familiar with what a Nerdfighter is, you probably want to check out this video here. That'll give you a little bit more of a background on what a Nerdfighter really is and, you know, what the whole thing is about. That being said, social anxiety doesn't happen just at Nerdfighter events. It can happen in a variety of places and a variety of situations. So today I want to talk about a couple ways that may be helpful for you to actually deal with that social anxiety. Nerdfighter gatherings are pretty friendly all in all and pretty easy going for the most part and generally pretty tame but we do sit around and we, we talk about a variety of different nerdy things or we do different types of nerdy things that are fun to do uh, like play board games or maybe go to a museum or things like that. But that certainly doesn't exempt it from causing social anxiety in somebody. Just because it's a nerdfighter gathering or any type of gathering really for that matter doesn't mean necessarily that that social anxiety aspect is going to go away. So let's talk about anxiety in general for a minute. Anxiety is that feeling of fear or uneasiness or that general worry that you get uh, that's associated with events or certain thoughts and things like that. Triggers. There's a wide number of things that are actually called triggers, which are actually the things that bring on those feelings of anxiousness or that anxiety. And one of those is social interaction. But social anxiety can actually be due to a variety of different triggers. And a couple of those triggers are anywhere from having to speak in a public setting in front of other people that you're not familiar with, um, over to interacting with people that you're not familiar with because you're not sure about how they might respond based on what you say, into I'm not sure about how these people are really going to see me or are they judging me and things like that. All of those can be triggers for social anxiety in addition to a wide variety of other social interactions that could cause triggers as well. Mental symptoms. Mental symptoms include uh, general fear or uneasiness all the way up to the point of potentially a little bit of paranoia. Physical symptoms. In some cases it can be a physical manifestation. So things like hives or sweating or shaking or in my wife's case what she used to experience was tightening in her chest and trouble breathing and in some cases even starting to experience blind spots. Yes, blind spots. So now that we've talked about some of the things that you may observe as far as symptoms and some of the trigger events that you might see, let's talk about some of the things that you can do that may actually help to ease some of those symptoms. Bring a friend. So the first thing that I would recommend, and I would actually recommend this in a lot of different cases, not just where you're experiencing social anxiety, but if you're going to anywhere new or if you're going to a group for the first time or anything like that, and that's to bring a friend. Number one, there's a safety aspect to it. It certainly helps to have a friend who's with you in terms of if you may be going somewhere where you're completely unfamiliar with the people who you're actually going to be going and hanging out with. In addition to that, they're also going to provide a layer of comfort and stability because of their familiarity. One thing that Christine pointed out to me is that she actually likes attending with me. I tend to be a little bit more outgoing, even in unfamiliar situations. And that actually eases her mind a little bit because it takes a little bit of the stress off of her. So if your friend is a little bit more outgoing, that may also help. Take a few deep breaths. Taking a few deep breaths can actually help in a variety of different situations, not just with anxiety, but also in other situations maybe where you're experiencing things like anger or sadness. Just stop and deep breath in and release. Simple as that. Do a couple of those and that will actually help give pause to your mind a little bit and help you take in your surroundings as well as bring a little bit more calm and easiness across your body. Compartmentalize. If you find yourself at a gathering where it's fairly large, uh, I might recommend to actually compartmentalize, which is to focus on just a small portion of the entire gathering. And that can help because then you're focused on just interacting with a few folks that can help actually ease the worry of trying to interact with everybody who's there. If you can find a small group who you're comfortable with, especially people that you've talked with before or interacted with before, seek out those people and then go ahead and stay with them. Talk yourself up. Positive thoughts. Actually, a little bit of self-talk internally can actually help improve your anxiety quite a bit in terms of reminding yourself that things are probably going to be just fine. Now, this can be difficult when you're experiencing fear or anxiety, but if you start inserting those thoughts and saying, this is going to be okay, it'll be all right, uh, I'm, I'm going to have a good time here. 
uh, that can actually help to push away that anxiety and help to remind you that, hey, you're here to have a good time. Be okay with just being yourself. So this one is probably one of the hardest things to do, especially if you're a little bit younger. I would suggest that this one gets easier over time, which is to just simply be yourself. And if you're not as chatty as everybody else, that's fine. They're, they're not going to judge you. And if they do, well, you know what? Screw them. If you have a physical tick, find something physical to do. So if you have a physical tick, which is usually brought about by having some sort of nervous energy that goes along with your anxiety, find a way to have an outlet for that energy. So maybe it's talking with your hands. Maybe it's playing with a ring on your finger a little bit while you're talking. Um, or maybe it's engaging in some sort of activity like playing cards, or if they're playing things like cornhole or washers. Remember that a little bit of anxiety is expected when going into new situations or unfamiliar events. However, if you start to feel like that anxiety is starting to take a hold and is gonna prevent you from being able to really enjoy yourself, try some of these things and see if they help out in terms of keeping your anxiety in check. So thanks for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, leave a comment down below, let me know. Also, if you have any suggestions about how you deal with anxiety, leave them in the comments. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you later.